because it looks like it has a wire. Let's see if this will help. That's low now. Wait. Well, it gives me a wider field of view at least. You can see pretty almost the whole board that way. Yeah, I think I'll do what they tried to do. I think I will glue that down somehow so it doesn't break so easy. That other one had the wire that I saw a wire sticking out of is. Now I don't see it. You can only see it when I'm on super close up view with that other deal. Let's see. As it could have been on the other side, but it will look, I don't think so, but we'll look. Okay. Yeah, there's uh, all this stuff is through hole components. They got a mix of through hole and uh, uh, service mount. They all look fine. I mean, they're not loose or anything. Okay, yeah, so all the soldering is done on this side. But I cannot... That's not enough magnification for me to make out the... I have to use this whole... whole capacity of this thing. Then I've got reflections from this light up in the ceiling. Dump my head and dang near laid on the table. And it's still not it's starting to hurt my neck. I need to get the angle of the light in the room right so that I can see it, see anything in the right distance. That's what I need to use is hot glue. That dries fast. I was trying to think of what would work. It looks like they put something that looks like air fill. Yeah, it doesn't feel like hot glue. I think it's like airplane glue kind of stuff, you know, or, or super glue. Okay. L plus. That makes me think that, you know, you'd want to be hooked up to one side of it. That might be the other side, but. Okay, but up there is where that, yeah, that's definitely where a solid core wire goes through. Oh, that looks like L minus near that. Wait. <laughs> oh, okay. The reflections just play serious tricks on my eyes. Well, the thing is, as loose as, as easy to break as that was, it might have been going to just break. Anyway, so. Plus. Okay, so if this one, the label's, you know, not near where it's soldered, but there's three uh, solder pads there. Look at, and, uh, but it may all be, though they may all be L plus, you know, all the positive voltage coming out of the regulator, or the converter from AC to DC, and then L minus. Over there, that definitely could, was probably the label for the one with the wire in it. So I think that's got it 
narrowed down enough. Oh, making me dizzy and kind of nauseated to do that that long. I never have been able to do stuff like that very long. <sighs> so, uh, Got sand in my eyes. Don't ask me. Don't ask me where it, where it comes from. I haven't figured it out. It's two places. Well, this feels like sand, but our towels are all old and they shed, and so I, they'll put get stuff in your eyes. But this feels like pure sand. Sometimes I feel it. Often I feel it in the water. You know, if I kind of rub my hands together while I'm washing my hands. I think that we're getting a bunch of sand, bunch of sand sediment going through our water pipes, and uh, we're on city water, so it's no telling where it's coming from. Somewhere, you know, our pressure's great. You know, it's not like we got a leak in our line or something. But even if we did, the water pressure would not let the sand in; it would push it away. But uh, unless the water was turned off, then it might go back in there if it was a big enough leak. You know. Well, it doesn't have to be very big for sand to get in. But this has been going on for over a year now, on and off. It'll get bad, and then it'll go away. I think maybe when they have a... most logical thing to me is when they have a water main break somewhere, they, you know, they have to dig down, op open it up, fix it, and so all that sand and mud gets in the main lines. Makes a while to wash on through. I used to uh, do maintenance on gas stations and well at the beginning of convenience store gas stations back in 1975 I got a job working for a company in Wichita, uh, Wichita Oil Company in Wichita Falls, Texas and they taught, I was just 18 years old, they taught me how to do all that stuff you know and uh, I, I've done that but mostly with gas lines so gasoline now that's bad and tough and you get a mixture of there's already water in the ground sometimes you never you never know when you dig you know first you break the concrete usually to get to the pipes because they're under the slab and then you get a jackhammer through the concrete and then you get in that hole and it's all full of muddy mud and water and then when you when you open up the gas line gas goes it joins it and so you don't want none of that going into uh, anybody's cars to the pump so it's really a pain now with water it'd be a you, you know you'd be careful you need to be careful about what gets in the line that can make people sick you know but anyway um yeah i think i've located it i keep forgetting the, these lights i keep forgetting to turn them off Okay, I'm going to put a red mark. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to put that other headset back on. Well, I won't put the red mark on there just now. I don't even know if it might, uh, you know, bleed into it. If I'm going to solder it, it could possibly bleed into it. But let's see, what do I need to do this? Hopefully it'll be easy to solder should just tin the i not even need there's enough solder there i might not even want to tin the iron i don't want to get too much on there get, get a bridge connection to the next joint <coughs> next pad but uh yeah first i'm going to get my glue hot glue gun and uh And glue this one down before it breaks. It hasn't broke yet. But that'll give it some strain relief. Then I'll go to the next one. And keep it from moving around and touching the other pads. So uh, I guess I'll have to stop here. And, uh, and get that stuff. All right, be back in a little bit.